show my name is dr damages we are coming to you from the greatest city in the world new york city yes 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 new york city is so great that we have started a drive through testing for coronavirus really oh yeah which fits our lifestyle you know when you drive through to a fast food restaurant you pay at this window you go to the next window you open your mouth they store the food inside you go to the next window you open your mouth they put in the drinks you know, and then the third window is where they test you for coronavirus. Wow. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. You know, now, now, that was the same promise of fast food after, before, after the coronavirus test that finally convinced President Donald Trump to go and get his test. And he came out negative. You know, meanwhile, everywhere in the world, people are taking drastic measures to fight this virus. In India, a group of Hindus are drinking cow urine to fight coronavirus. What? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, look at the headline now. Look at the pictures. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't be horrified. Don't be, because, because these same people we are looking at, they also take their bath in cow dunk. You know? In <laughs> CFE. Imagine, imagine them as your guest, dinner party guest, after drinking a cow urine and taking their shower and their bath inside them. Um, cow uh, dunk. They will come for dinner. The disease is beginning to reach actors like this one. Athletes like this ones. Top government officials like this ones. And even their wives. Everybody. Nobody is safe. Nobody. Now, President Trump has a good reason not to honor his church uh, mandated once a month visit to the, his wife's uh, other room. <laughs> now, he just has to say, ah, I, I can't do that, I can't do it, I can't do it, coronavirus, no, 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 I can't do it. You know? So, so if coronavirus was a joke to you all, it's no longer a joke now. Nowhere, nowhere in the world is no more a joke. Why we wait for the full weight of the virus to descend on Africa, with or without our high temperature? The usual causes of death continues to kill Africans in their thousands. Yeah, malaria, hunger, and explosives. Yes, in Abule, Ado, Lagos, an oil pipeline exploded and killed over two dozen people. Very sad. The devastation was a lot. Look at the picture. More than 50 houses destroyed. These are the kind of explosives that have been happening in more than six times in the last 10 years. You would think that the people in charge of preventing it, or the people who are supposed to do something when it happens, have figured out the plan. Hell no. Hell no. People are trapped in the building. But the most important thing for the governor of Lagos State was to run to Abuja to go and show Buhari the pictures. In this day and age, look at, look at it. No videos, just pictures. <laughs> That's what Buhari is watching. In serious countries, the governor will sit his butt at home and Buhari, the president, will be on his way to Lagos to see things for himself, what is going on. By the way, by the way, here is how an arrogant and uninterested uh, the, the, um, director general in charge of rescue operations handled the matter. Watch. Some buildings have been moved to Gangsdale, but under the watch of Mr. Governor, Mr. Babaji Shana Sawodu, they are on top of it. Yes. Uh huh. They are on top of it, he said. The governor is in Abuja, and this man on the ground, <laughs> you know, on top of it. Watch him. Nobody is trapped. Uh, if you look, if you look at your left, we can see people being rescued from there. If you look at him, what's happening to you? There's people crying there. This is the thing. People were trapped and we are crying. And this uh, Onuku of a man in charge of rescue operation is saying, uh, there is no difference. We, there's a difference between being trapped and they're saying that the government is not on top of it. Can you imagine that? 
I weep for my people. I weep. By the way, why is it that Buhari has not traveled uh, abroad recently? Does it have anything to do with coronavirus? So he could sit his butt at home for this long. Last week, the governor of Kano State released his own virus called the Tron Met. Oh, yes! Governor Ganduje, the same man caught on camera collecting bribe from a contractor in dollars, dethroned an emir. Look at him in action. Yeah, he dethroned an emir. Yes, this is the man who kicked out the emir of Kano for insubordination for disrespecting the governor and for mismanaging the finances of Kano Emirates. Talking about my mismanaging finances. Yeah, look at the Emir living the living the palace. Sanusi is gone. Sanusi was not just dethroned, he was banished to a small village in Nasarawa state called Awe. <laughs> it was such a big deal. And, and, and the political elite were up in arms by this one. I, I fear for the political future of Governor Abdullah Ganduje if he does not reconcile himself with the northern elite. Because for all I care, many of the uh, allegations and accusations leveled against Emir uh, Samisu Lamido Sanusi were more like, you know, calling a dog a bad name in order to hang it. <laughs> now, now, the political elites were up in arms, both from the left and from the right. Look at this one. What was the accusation level against him? He stole, he mismanaged Emirate funds. This is a man talking about poverty in the north, a man talking about trying to bring a revolution in the north. Where did he get the money to be having over six Rolls Royce? You see, you see, <laughs> bring back our uh, Jido uh, Joe, bring him back. He was speaking truth to power. He was, he was rooting for the masses. He was telling the north about the rot and the need to do something to fix that road before it consumes everybody. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Bring back uh, Asari Dokubo. Bring back Asari Dokubo. Sanusi, a thief, a common thief, was removed. And people are saying that the man says the truth. He has no truth to tell. He's a liar from the pit of hell. You, you, can, you can go back and forth again and again, and you will find yourself shouting to both sides, you know, in the voice of patient Jonathan, Will you keep quiet? Will you keep quiet? <laughs> That's what you feel like saying. Anyway, so Sanusi was banished in our way. His lawyers went to court, and the court said that this is no longer 18th century, not a Nigeria that Governor Ganduje has no right to banish a Nigerian citizen. Oh, in fact, in fact, if Ganduje had the right to banish Sanusi, then for collecting bribe with his two hands, that his hands should have been chopped off according to 18th century uh, Northern Nigerian laws. Nonsense. So, so Sanusi left away and went to Lagos, which is where he belongs, you know? He belongs to Lagos where they speak grammar. On arrival in Lagos, the pastors came in one after the other. You know, when you get to Lagos, that's the next thing that will happen. Pastors, here is one of them praying for Sanusi. Watch. Father, we pray for Nigeria. Yes. We ask that Nigeria will change. Amen. We ask that Nigeria will accept the truth Amen. and promote your son beyond what anybody could have ever imagined. Amen. Yes. <laughs> the next talk is about what is in stock for the former emir. Like everything in Nigeria, you know, it is now conspiracy time. 
some people are saying that oh this is all a plot for the emir to run for a former emir to run for president in 2023 but sanusi has something to say about that watch yes i think if i go into politics it will destroy everything i've done and there's no way that you could be persuaded to rethink that attitude? And not to what I've seen in politics. I've been in Abuja long enough to know that I cannot survive one year in that space. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's go back to some of the things that Sanusi said that pissed off Northern Nigerian leaders. Watch him. Now, because of the condition of Northern Nigeria, it is almost cliche now to say if you are seen as normal, if you're a governor in the north or a leader in the north and if you are seen as normal in the sense that you continue to do what your predecessors have been doing doing the same thing which has been normalized then there's something wrong with you you're part of the problem those those are called part of the problem they, they did not like that now what do you expect is you know oh, oh, oh what about this one if we don't listen, there will be a day when there will be a constitutional amendment that addresses this issue of quota system and federal character. The rest of the country cannot be investing, educating its children, producing graduates, and then they watch us, they can't get jobs because they come from the wrong state, when we have not invested in the education of our own children. Now, now, instead of throwing these things back at Sanusi, you know, like saying to him, when, what have you done? What have you done to solve these problems that you are always pointing out? What have you done? They, they thought that removing him from office would solve the problem. No, it won't solve it. For instance, apart from, apart from taking billions of Naira from the central bank and then giving it to Kanister when he was the central bank governor, you know, what has he done? What else did he do? You know, the money, <laughs> the money that he used to buy Rolls Royce, you know, decorate the palace, uh, could have been used, you know, to show Dan Tata and Dan Gotes and their batches of Kano how to deal with some of these problems. You know, it's not just about getting the government. People can do things on their own. So Lucy talked about the importance of girls going to school before getting married. His daughter went to school before getting married. But, but he married an 18-year-old girl as his fourth wife and then sent her to school in London. Can you imagine that? Sanusi talked about men without the means marrying four wives as a source of poverty in Northern Nigeria. But having the means today does not mean that you will have the means tomorrow. You know what I mean? If Dino, Melai, you know Dino, had married a five or four wives and had 20 children because he was a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and was collecting hundreds of millions each year from the Nigerian government. Yeah? What would have happened to his wives and children when he lost that position? He would have been crying to God to come and, and help him. <laughs> like, like he did. You know what I mean? To fully understand Sanusi, we need to start from the beginning. Sanusi was a kid when his grandfather, Emir Sanusi, was dethroned in 1963. Look at them, you know? He did not get over it. It defined him. Sanusi Lamido Sanusi studied economics at Amadou Bello University in Zaria. And then, after that, he went to Sudan, where he studied Sharia and Islamic studies. When he came back, Something happened. After there was a crisis in the north, in, in Kano particular then, that led to the murder of an Igboman over, according to what they said now, that his wife desecrated the Quran. There were nine people there who were accused of killing the man. They caught his head and they were crying the head around the city of Kano. Emir Shanusi was part of the gang, according to that story. Wow. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that man saying that Sanusi was part of the gang that allegedly stormed a police station in Kano and seized Gideon Akaloka? Is that what he's saying? Akaloka, who was locked up there when a mob wanted to kill him. Now, now for those who do know, Gideon's say was that his wife was allegedly desecrated the, um, the Quran by using it to wipe uh, the holy book to as toilet paper for his daughter. What? Yeah, that was, that was a crime. 
Is, is that man saying that Sanusi's group broke into jail, took Akaloka, beheaded him, and paraded his head around Kano? Is that what he's saying? Let's listen to the man. The remaining eight were dealt with by the state. They lost their lives, but he escaped judgment and was confined to Chokoto. And it was from there, he was rescued by a certain um, man who got him a job in UBA. Now, now, here is what the man is saying here. For his involvement, Abacha wanted to deal with Sanusi. But First Bank Chairman then, Umar Mat Mutalab, pleaded with Abacha not to. So, so Sanusi was then locked up in Sokoto for two years as punishment. When he came out, he was handed over to Mutalab, the same Mutalab, who got him a job at the First Bank, from where he moved to United Bank for Africa. Later on, President Omar Yaradua made him the central bank governor. That was the story of Sanusi. Now, 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 just on the side, the son of the same uh, Mutalab, if you remember, became the underwear bomber, the Nigerian boy who uh, wore underwear uh, aboard a flight to Michigan on Christmas Day on 2000 and um, sometime 2000 to 2009. Yes, that is the brief history of Sanusi Labido Sanusi. Of course, of course, when President Jonathan was in power, Sanusi was a whistleblower who alleged that billions of dollars were missing at the NNPC. He also forced some banks to close in a process that many said was unfair. Now, now he was removed by the central bank governor and Kanu State Governor then, uh, Kwan Kwan Zop, immediately made him the Emmy of Kanu. You know, the reason why Kwan Kwan Zop did that partly was, you know, as a way to save him from further humiliation. History repeats itself. Now, his childhood friend, Governor L. 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 Rufai of Kaduna State, is already giving him appointments to save him from further humiliation. Look at the headline. Some people are even saying he should curate an emirate and make him an emir of Kaduna. You know? Now, our forefather said that he who does not know what killed his father or his grandfather is going to be killed by the same thing. If diabetes killed your father or your grandfather, diabetes is going to kill you, most likely. If greed killed your father or grandfather, greed is most likely going to kill you. If grandstanding killed your father or your grandfather, grandstanding is most likely going to kill you. Sasha! <laughs> Tweet that out. Let them, let them give it to them. Unless, unless you do something about what killed your father or your grandfather, the same thing is going to kill you. Now, most people do something. What you do depends on your interpretation, the one you give to what happened to your father or your grandfather. The lessons from the rise and fall of Sanusi are this. A lot of Nigerian political actors, out of sheer desperation, use the first part of their lives to destroy the last. Sasha! Do your job. You know, they use the first part of their lives to destroy the last. You know what I mean? The story of Sanusi Lamido Sanusi is another classic example. Now, the good news is that the former emir doesn't need to apologize anymore before he speaks. He doesn't need to do that. Like Let me, in any case, apologize in advance in case anyone is offended by what I have to say. <laughs> no, 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 no more. And he doesn't have to fear something like this. Like this happening to him from now on. <laughs> that was Mohammed Jamil Bello, a man from KB State, running towards President Muhammad Buhari. Some people said <laughs> that he attempted to attack the president. The man said he only wanted to take a picture with the president. You know, listen to the. It was emotional love. For the person who I believe to have been the most integrity nurtured, honest, incorruptible, and right real. Listen to listen to the man. Yada 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 yada. That is what you say when someone is saying something you don't want to hear. <laughs> let me let me the first thing is this: if the man is telling the truth, why did he allow Lai Mohammed to be standing beside him? Why? These two things are 
incompatible. Truth, lie, Mohammed, incompatible. You can't do that. Like I told you, this was supposed to be a special edition dedicated to the rise and fall of Emir Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. But I need to mention two, just two important things before I go. In Nigeria, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, I didn't know it have anything like that. You know, anyway, they have closed down a Chinese restaurant in Victoria Island, Lagos. No, no, not for coronavirus. No, 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 no. For refusing to serve Nigerians food. No way. Can you imagine the audacity? They are in Nigeria and refusing to serve Nigerians food. Look at, look at, look at the headline. Look at, look at the restaurant. Can you imagine that? Can you go to China and start a restaurant and refuse to ch serve Chinese? Anyway, the commission used intelligence and they kept monitoring them to nail the restaurant. I say kudos to the commission. Kudos! All other uh, 101 agencies and commissions that we have in Nigeria, they need to wake up and do their job, like this one. You know, the ones that were supposed to monitor fake products coming into Nigeria, it's, they need to be disbanded. <laughs> that one needs to be disbanded, and uh, all the people who run it banished to Sambisa Forest. That's, that's what it, I mean, can you imagine that? There's an agency that does that. The other thing I want to mention is um, the regional distribution of projects that will be undertaken with the $22.7 billion that the Senate, Nigerian Senate, just approved for the government. $22.7 look at the, look at the distribution. No, I know, I know the government is suspending the loan because, <laughs> because oil prices collapsed. And Nigerian government is no more credit worthy. Nobody will give us loan. So, so they're suspending it, but we know that they will go back. The price will go up again. Anyway, the fact that none of the projects was located in the Southeast is a total disaster. Is it that nobody thought that, you know, it didn't look good or that the people who put together that list, they thought that adding projects uh, in, the, in the Southeast even if it's mere $500 million project, we give the beer friends another reason to cry foul. This is foul. We no go agree. You know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I don't understand if people in this government are all right. I don't, I don't. Our elder said, When you find someone like Rochas, Senator Rochas Okorocha, speaking out for the people, you know that you have screwed up. <laughs> you will listen to him. <laughs> and all this. First time I'm speaking on behalf of the Ibos. That this feeling of neglect and marginalization by the Southeast needs to be corrected somehow. Of recent, it's a $22.7 billion that came to this nation as known. And nothing is being traced to the Southeast. It's painful. And the Igbos are beginning to feel neglected, rejected in a nation, the thing they are part of. I think this wretched. <laughs> Be very afraid when the Agafulef one of Ndi Beribe in Imo State starts to complain. I'm telling you, he even revealed a secret to the Senate. Listen to him. Please. Let me tell you, Mr. Senate President, you might not know. The Southeast are not very, very excited anymore. If you go to the Southeast, you don't see uh, the, 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 the presence of uh, uh, federal government, as you should. <laughs> In English, what we call the thing that Richard said there is, um, we said, this is how we describe it, to put it mildly. Because what he did was to put it in a very mild way. Nonsense. Here is my concern for today. It's taken from page 419 of the book. Yes, I said it, by Ashley Lorenzana. And it says, sooner or later in life, we will all take our turn being in the position we once had someone else in. Let me, let me say that again. Sooner or later in our lives, we will all take our own turn being in the position we once had someone else in. I go far to, to bring this to you. Until next week, I'm Dr. Damages. I diagnose. You hear yourself. Woo. Hello.
if you live in the UK or the US or in Canada or in Italy or in Ireland or Spain ah, and you send money to Nigeria or to Ghana or to Kenya or Tanzania or even Uganda this is your lucky day download send wave and use it to send money home join hundreds of thousands of others who are already using send wave send wave is safe secure reliable fast and more importantly it is free absolutely no fees you know for your first transaction use the promo code doctor and send wave we add five dollars or five euros or five pounds to the money that you are sending home dash just because you know me eh? doctor damages what are you waiting for go and download it from your app store thank you